All right, so today we are going to um, take a look at trying to create a work of art inspired by Salvador Dali. Um, so let's kind of take a look at some Salvador Dali work. Whoop. Oh, uh oh. There we go, down here in the bottom. <laughs> All right, so the very first piece we're going to look at here. Um, is one of these surrealistic landscapes. And landscapes had a lot, uh, you know, going on in them. And so uh, this one has a lot to do with reflections of elephants. You can kind of see elephant shapes here uh, in the... Uh, and so animals being incorporated were, were a big part of uh, the surrealistic idea, these surrealistic paintings. Um we see these sort of human forms uh, in this as well. Uh, you know, you can obviously you can see these uh, these cranes that are here. These that they're and but all of these things are designed to sort of take on um, this um, very surrealistic feeling. It's very uh, weird, uh, strange, super real space if you look at uh back here there's a boat and that boat is on dry land on the sand there uh, our horizon line, i don't know if you can see it is kind of stretched whoop, a little a little high on that one but uh kind of across the back there and then of course uh you can see here there's the the human figure uh on the sort of on the um uh, the side and if you look he, he doesn't really maybe fit in proportionally uh, where he's standing the rocks, we might expect him to be a little smaller. Um, but that might be part of it, you know, and, and how this, you look at this use of uh, this, uh, negative space that's created, um, by these, uh, these, um, um, voids in between the, the, the positive shapes that he's created here. And so those cranes kind of started out as animals and, but down here, they kind of morph into these, um, sort of. Um, just organic uh, sort of structures. Oh, oh, let's go back. There we go. Uh, another one here in our land, our horizon line here is uh, is below uh, the top of the little mountains there. And this one, he's making use of those clocks. We see the uh, clocks, the melting and uh, distorted clocks were a big part of what he did. Uh, there's a uh, a very out of place sculpture. We talked about displacement, having weird things in places where they don't belong. He is showing that this goes back into space by showing the three dimensionality of that. Um, um, those rocks. Uh, persistence of memory. I think I call this persistence of time. Uh, we always learned it as persistence of time. Uh, which was kind of interesting. I was like, I didn't realize I got that wrong. Uh, but of course, we see melting clocks. Our horizon line here is very easy to identify. It's that red or that line that goes across there. I just identified that red line where the sky up there meets the um, the land or the water in this case. Um, we see some weird things kind of going on. We've got all this cool organic stuff going over here. Like, oh, this is just a regular normal landscape. And then all of a sudden we see this sort of monolithic uh, rectangle, uh, you know, very geometric shape here. Uh, again, the melting clocks, uh, this sort of anamorphic figure here. Is this an animal? Is this a, uh, some type of, uh, person being represented? You know, you just kind of don't know what's part of the surrealism. Uh, another clock represented here kind of, uh, tells us it's about time and about, um, that, the, how, uh, time and space work together a little bit and he's showing us depth by using single point perspective which is what we're going to be doing and so if you follow these lines off they go off into a vanishing point somewhere in that area uh, another landscape by Dolly and then we're going to take a look at some of the other artists and, and, and sort of what they did and, and again what makes this surreal uh, this is not a cloud shape that you would normally see it's kind of interesting uh, this uh, sort of again anamorphic rock shape that we see created there uh, a cat displacement uh, a raccoon whatever that is it's a cat uh, shouldn't be there to, that's out of place uh, the negative space in these rocks or the little snow creates the the shape of an animal 
Um, looking, being able to see through the spaces is is a is an interesting part. And then again, of course, we got those geometric and organic shapes uh, uh, juxtaposed against each other. Uh, let's look at oops, Frida Kahlo. She was a uh, artist who worked in some of the surreal stuff. Again, she's worked with the landscape. If we kind of identify her horizon line, it's sort of somewhere back in that space. <clears throat> we see her using displacement. There's an American flag up in the clouds. And if you notice, they're covered in smoke. That's all very symbol, uh, uh, symbolic. She uses a lot of symbolism. Uh, we see the sun and the moon. Um, we see uh, this pile of rocks and all kinds of little figures, Mayan figures, or uh, those types of things, fertility figures, and little uh, skulls, all kinds of neat, weird displacement. Uh, but she's also making use, again, of that sort of geometric shape versus this or these organic shapes that we see going on. Um, not use of animals so much, but we see lots of flowers. One of the things she used were lots of flowers. Sometimes she used monkeys. Monkeys was a big thing uh, in Frida Kahlo's work. So she sometimes would use the animals as well. We see her horizon line here. I'm just going to identify this each time because we're going to be making use of her horizon line. Uh, that's what kind of helps us realize these are landscapes. Uh, this one, she's kind of comparing the sun and the moon and so forth. Uh, we see her pain from when she was... Uh, um, having all those surgeries and so forth. But the, the application of the land, if you look, uh, it's cracked and broken, much like uh, she felt she was. She's sitting uh, in this uh, this half of the painting, um, holding her back brace, again, representative of that pain, uh, symbolic. Uh, this is another landscape she did. We can see her rods line up here. And she's created these big uh, sort of human shapes. If you can see the eye here and the mouth and maybe a nose in this area. And the forehead kind of coming out of this space, which is this uh, broken land. She made up a lot of um, use of the broken land. We see a, a human head here. So think about maybe things you can do in your landscape that would be surrealistic. Dr. Seuss, what's he doing here? Ah, well, because um, Dr. Seuss is probably our first uh, introduction into something that's surreal. And uh, Dr. Seuss was... Uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the representative of surrealism sort of for, uh, for younger, uh, audiences. And so, uh, if we were to find a horizon line, it would be somewhere in here. He's got a landscape that's sort of like Kentucky, if you will, There's lots of mountains. So, uh, the horizon line is not just a flat thing. Uh, what's surreal about this? Well, the use of color. Uh, you know, these are abstract colors and abstract shapes. These aren't the real kinds of trees that exist and that sort of thing. Uh, he also made use of animals and not always like animals we know or uh, think about. He made use of some weird and crazy animals. Uh, he often made use of displacement things, uh, people flying or that sort of thing. Uh, he might have, uh, um, uh, you know, and this is one of his, his more... Um, uh, artistic paintings versus not to say that his his um, childhood books weren't uh, also artistic um, but this one was more of a painting that represented that sort of uh, you know artistic expression side more so than that storytelling and so we see sort of weird displacement he's still doing some of the familiar things we we'll, 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 okay, a little high on that uh, but a horizon line might be back in there somewhere these might kind of dip down below it and maybe somewhere there um we see, uh, you know, use of color. And again, uh, instead of animals in this one, he's making use of these weird and interesting uh, flowers and and trees that are very um, unique to this. Clouds, again, don't look like that. So these are unique shapes and ways to handle. And also kind of using some of that <coughs> geometric. These are sort of seeing uh, sort of geometric and uh, in, in the way that they're created. That same spiral, those often sort of repeated, and he's using a lot of pattern here. But he's creating a, a very surrealistic um, uh, landscape. We see this tree that's kind of growing into and becoming a mountain. It's also a wave, and there's ladders here that are uh, out of place. That's displacement. So very surrealistic, and that's Dr. Seuss. Uh, same sort of thing here. A horizon line would be somewhere in there, maybe. And um, just like, uh, again, we got a little mountain that comes up above, maybe a little valley goes below. Um, we, again, we talked about, and this is part of that one we looked at before, uh, or in that same series, and the uh, sort of unique things out of place to the broad use of colors and so forth. So that's what we're going to try to do today. 
Uh, and I'm going to try to keep the lesson brief already. I've gone uh, longer than I had wanted to and anticipated. And so um, let me see if I can get out of this. Uh, discard those annotations. And let's take a look. Oh, what's this? There we go. So I'm going to be doing this on Chrome Canvas. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I thought about a lot of different ways to do a Salvador Dali demonstration. And, and honestly, there's just too many ways that you could create this on your own. So let me start by saying uh, you don't have to at all. Uh, and this applies for all the stuff we do. You, know, you don't have to use Chrome Canvas. So you can use whatever you have. Yeah, this is one of those that's probably going to be easier for you to do and with pencil and paper and that sort of thing. Or even collage it. And so if you got magazines around cut those mountains out and paste those mountains in and cut people out or cut animals out and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to kind of freehand it. Uh, I'm not going to finish it during the lesson today because this will take really too long. And really all I want to do is help you understand sort of how to get started, how you can create your, um, your uh, own landscape, your own environment area, and then turn you loose because really yours is going to be unique to you. I don't want yours to look like mine. But I want you to have the same basic understanding of how to develop that space. So let's start off with this image. And um, you can create this sort of image uh, any way you uh, are able to or would like. Again, you can simply draw it like I have freehand. It doesn't have to be perfect, just like mine's not. Uh, but what you do want to indicate uh, is if, we, and if you have a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper, great. Just take uh, a ruler. Make us use your straight edge, go from corner to corner, and about middle way through the page, you're gonna make a line that goes straight across. This is our horizon line. This is where our um, sky meets our land. Um, this these little lines here that kind of go and intersect in the middle are gonna be our perspective lines. And they're going to help us understand that everything that runs parallel to each other along these lines uh, will fall back into space uh, in uh, at, on the top and bottom of these lines. And so to just give you a, a quick understanding of what that means, and I'm going to turn this off in just a second. Uh, let's do a new layer for this just so I can turn this off momentarily. I think that's the layer I want to work on. All right. Uh, so let's say I were to bring in uh, telephone poles, and, and you've probably done this demonstration before. If I bring lines from top to bottom here, and they should get a little closer together the further they go back in space, and a little further apart. That's a little better. Uh, the closer they get to us. We can put little T's across them, and again, the top of the T would get smaller as that goes back into space. Little tiny T's, bigger T's here. Okay. And so that gives the uh, perception. And if we put a little, little lines, and again, the lines get close to us, they get longer, further away, they should be smaller. But that indicates that things going away from us appear to get smaller. They don't really tell from pole way off the distance. It's really as tall as one closest to us. But they look like they get smaller. And they all travel back to a point in the very back that we call the vanishing point that's way back there in this case where those lines intersect on our horizon line so this is the first step to making sure that your artwork is going to um be representational of that uh that space that three-dimensional space and it's going to kind of work effectively so let's get rid of that layer now that you can understand I'm going to leave this layer on so I can kind of see what I'm going to do. But um, I'm going to start off by uh, thinking about the different elements I want to have in here. And I'm just going to do a loose sketch to kind of think about those different elements. The first thing I want to think about is he used those, those weird rocks and cliffs. Oop, let me choose my layer to draw. All right. So I'm making a little sort of cliff that's going to be in this space here. And, uh, you know, maybe it's going to have a couple of layers to it. It's going to going to be sort of a cliff rock over here on this side. And over here, I think I'm going to have some interesting mountains, maybe. And I'm also going to make use over here 
uh, maybe a big egg shape. He liked to use those egg shapes. I think I'm going to put a, an egg shape here. I'm going to put a sun in mine. That's going to be sort of this area. So that's going to tell me that the shadow that this egg is going to cast is going to do something like that. It's a little bigger. It'll do something like that. And, uh, you know, I want to think about different elements that are going to be out of place. Think about things that, that really don't, don't belong in this space. And so I want to start thinking about and maybe uh, how we can sort of change the space up a little bit as well. So I'm going to create sort of a, uh, a little area here that's going to be recessed and i'm going to make like a crack coming out of the ground maybe here sort of like uh frida Kahlo would have done and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of morph this into and there's gonna be a little crack here it kind of does like a, a little cross crack maybe it makes a crack something like this and my crack is sort of following that line that sort of indicates that perspective and by doing so um, I'm kind of giving that impression that it gets smaller and goes back into space. There's kind of creating that space. And so I'm going to turn this into like an upside down, uh, person's head a little bit here. And I'm going to sort of make maybe indications of eyes and maybe a mouth where that would kind of be. And, um, what other thing do I want to include? What other cool things were often included in those, um, oops those surrealistic paintings well animals we talked a little bit about animals and i'm a big fan of elephants and so i am going to put just peeking out from behind this egg uh maybe a little elephant is going to be back in here and this is going to be where his ear is going to be there and his trunk and he's just kind of Hanging out behind this egg space here. Oh, an elephant back in there. We're going to bring the egg down a little bit. And kind of coming out from behind that egg is going to be that elephant. So this is going to be the basis of mine. Now, a couple of things I want to do uh, to kind of make it different. I'm going to put in here a, a rectangle. Now, um, to show that it's in this egg. I'm going to kind of bend these a little bit. But now I want to think about how I'm going to show that that's kind of going into the egg. So I want to show those perspective lines, lines that sort of follow that these lines here. Like, so if I had a line that went from this point down to that vanishing point, it would look something like this inside the egg. Now outside the egg, it would kind of go like that. But inside the egg, it would be sort of right in here. Same thing down here. If I could show that inside, it would kind of come down like that a little bit. But we're looking inside the egg now. So maybe I'll make the top of it darker. Because it's sort of in shadow inside that egg. And we'll deal with that a little bit more in just a second. The other thing I want to do is also put a rectangle in this one. Only this one, it's going to go all the way almost to the ground. And this way, when I show it... The perspective lines here i am going to see a little bit of that coming up and so that's how i'm going to show that the hole in that uh, is uh, in perspective so i'm going to turn off now that layer underneath and i'm just going to kind of look at what i've got here in my space in my plane here of what of my canvas here and let's see where did i I do want to put the horizon line where it belongs. So let's make sure. Oh, I want a little, a little crazy with that. Let's erase that here and here and here. All right. And so I think this is kind of a good basis. Now, this is going to be the 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 start of mine. And I'm not going to work too much longer on this while we're while you're watching because honestly, yours is going to be much different. But I just kind of want to explain a little bit about how you might use color and try to create some of that, that, that realism. We've done demos on how you use, um, uh, and we've done lessons on how you use uh, 
value to uh, and create the impression that's formed. So if we look at this egg, now again, most of this is going to be in the shadow side uh, of the uh, of the egg because of where the sun's coming from. So I'm going to make this side in particular just a little darker. All right, well, that's a little, I got a little crazy dark on that side. But because the whole thing's kind of in perspective, we're going to make that a little darker. It's a little lighter here at the top. This would be a little lighter here. And I think I want to turn that opacity down a little bit. And I want to kind of redo what I've done up here. All right, so what I'm trying to do is just kind of give the impression that this is a three-dimensional egg. I really went too dark there. Let's get rid of that and try to do this a little better the second time around. Oh, okay, I like that better. All right. So softer transitions, it doesn't all of a sudden get really dark. All right. And again, this is just gonna be my, I'm gonna actually develop this into a nice painting here because I kind of like doing these uh, and having these in my own personal collection. And I'm gonna leave that sort of white space there in the middle to kind of show that that light uh, is coming in. Uh, matter of fact, I might even draw a little line in here to show the inside. Like, that's where it ends. And then we'll see that, that line that connects that mountain in the background there. So, whatever color I make that, I'm going to continue there. And that'll convince us that that is part of that background. And we're seeing through. Uh, now, I'm going to come down here and really concentrate on this and I'm gonna go with my pen tool here and yeah and really make this dark go really dark under here all right All right, so now I'm getting my shadow in here for my egg, and I'm just trying to convince the world that that egg exists in this three-dimensional space. Uh, I'm going to kind of zoom in here a little bit, and I'm going to put just a little detail into this elephant. And I don't need him to be super realistic. Oh, well, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to use my pen. There we go. So again, I don't need him to be super realistic, um, but I want to kind of give the impression. Now, I'm going to make him an African elephant, and the difference between African elephants and Asian elephants, there's a couple, but the most noticeable is the size of the ears, and you're probably already aware of that. Ooh, that's huge. Let's turn that down. And so he's going to have those big ears that the African elephant typically are known for, as opposed to those smaller ears that we normally see on those Asian elephants. All right, so let's add a little more detail here. <coughs> I really don't like where that chunk's going. Let's try to get rid of that all together. All right, now. Uh, much better. And his legs would actually be more in the front here, not way back at the end of the body. And his ears wouldn't be nearly that large, but we're going to over 
state the size of his ears a little bit. Uh, mostly so um, it'll read at any distance that, hey, that's a, that's one of those big-eared elephant animals. Yeah. All right. And for a minute there, it looked like he had like three or four legs. Now, uh, I got rid of that, but honestly, if that ended up being something that was part of it, that would uh, that wouldn't um, violate any of our uh, our rules, if you will, regarding um, sort of those surrealistic uh, impulses. All right, and there's his back leg. All right, and so I'm just gonna kind of—he's really big. There we go. All right. Let's just zoom out a little bit and see if we, yeah, that's going to read as an elephant. Just to make sure that reads as an elephant. Again, I'm just doing this as an under sketch. I'll probably bring a lot of color back over and add that later. The next thing I want to do is think about how I can convince people that this is three dimensional. And again, looking at value. How can value convince us that that's a deep space that goes down into the ground? There's a crevice here. And the way to do that is with value is want to create this real dark recess because this is catching a lot of shadow again that sun's up and in the other direction if we were looking at the other side of these cracks they might catch a little more light all right and then again i'm gonna remember to consider what's going on with uh my weird face here so I'm going to kind of give the impression that maybe this rock comes down in this crevice and it's really going to create sort of a nose shape, maybe a nose shape here. And I'm going to have a real pointy nose because again, it's going to be very stylized because this is not supposed to read as an actual person, but a real surreal person. So I'm going to bring the eyes in. As if these are just more cracks are kind of going on with the broken earth here. Let's make some more cracks there. Again, this is going to be dark. Real dark underneath. And maybe there's a crack that comes up here and makes the mouth area. And so this is sort of my um, humanoid head in the ground here and uh, again yours probably won't look any like this and that's good uh, i'm then going to really quickly consider my mountains back here and my little cliffs over here that we talked about earlier all right and i'm just going to bring in some color real quick so i can kind of see how this is developing as always i'm going to go with my um little pastel I'll start with let's actually start with the background color that and because it's a big bright sky I'm going to do some sort of weird muted colored orange background all right All right, and already when I start popping in color, I already start to feel that depth start to develop and you can kind of get the feeling that these things kind of go back into space. That color helps add value when we start adding these hues in here, these, uh, these colors and tones and values, tints and shades, we start getting that impression of that depth starts popping in there. I'm gonna go with a real bright kind of weird almost green yellow sun that's kind of weird but i kind of like it i think i'm gonna go even brighter though with it because it's a really bright sun and in fact in the very middle i'm gonna go with a crazy yellow i think and kinda else. all right so i kind of like what i got there i'm gonna repeat some of that over here just because i like to have that repeated color and that's going to kind of bring out that sun throughout the whole area all right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my cliffs and I'm going to go with them and something more of a really cool Adobe-like red here. So I'm gonna 
bring that in. And right now I'm just mapping in color. And I'm going to let that come down here. And then this one, we're going to go a little darker. So let's go with this one here. All right, now we've got the impression of those two little cliffy mountains sort of coming in here. I'm going to add some more detail to those in just a moment. I then want to come back though first and put in a little of this yellow here show that we're looking kind of through and because now i'm going to do a real bright green grass like this is like a real pretty weird green grass all across here i'm going to tap just a little from the opacity the side now a little green right in there oh and that's going to convince people that that's what we're looking through to get to these cliffs all right All right, I'm popping in my green here. And again, I'm just color mapping. Now, uh, I will start showing you how I'll develop my last stages and then I'll quit. Uh, and if you have already ducked out to go do your own, you've not hurt my feelings today. Make Day is just here to help you understand how to do your project. If you've got a handle on it, go on. Go on and get it done. All right. Put that down. Let's go in here. Make sure our elephant doesn't have a halo of nothing around him. And while I'm zoomed in on him, let's go ahead and give him some of his color. And he's going to be sort of a bluish gray. Yeah, something along that line. Let's go ahead and give him some of his color. And I'm just mapping in color real broadly. And then I'll show you kind of what I will do at this point. Uh, well, and then let's see back out first and finish what I'm doing here. One thing at a time. Now, these uh, uh, mountains, I want to do something really kind of different with. So uh, color-wise. And I want to go with whoops, something in this purple range. Something really kind of unique in this purple range. And I've chosen this purple because uh, when we talk about complementary colors, you might recall that purple and yellow are complementary. So I think this purple will make a neat um, sort of um, counterbalance to that interesting yellow sky we've got going on there. And remember this little part here. Is where we can see it coming through. So let's make sure we get that purple. Oh, and of course we got to get that sky. We got to get it yellow orange. All right, let's do that sky. I know I do it. Nope. I know I do it. All right. This is sort of where uh, I'm going to just show you how I would do my detail. Uh, and I've done this in other ones, and you probably go, why do you do that? Um, I like this effect. And so what I like to do is I like to bring a uh, sort of a dark pen, if you will, and a real fine tip, <laughs> and literally sort of draw in those details and let those, oops, I'm going to create a new layer just for this, actually. And I want to create a new layer just for my little detail lines. And these lines are going to be how I sort of outline and clean everything up, if you will. So I'm going to use it to kind of draw in the details of the elephant here. And because I've got my color map out, you know, I've uh, kind of mapped it out a little bit. It's a lot easier to kind of figure out where uh, these detail lines are going to kind of go and, and do the most to uh, provide that detail where I want it. 
Um, so I'm not real happy that I left that green out there. Then we'll fix that here in a little bit. Uh, but just real quick, I'll show you. So like in this area, for instance, it kind of cleans things up as we start to put these lines in here. And starts to really help define oops, define those edges. So when we start to really clean this up, and even the little outlines that make our egg here. I'm really happy with my egg shape. I like the egg. And you can kind of see, as I start to add those lines and clean these things up, it really starts to pop in that feeling that you're in this three-dimensional space. And I'm just going to start adding some real loose detail to these cliffs. Yeah, a little shadows in here. And I want to clean up the same way. I'll do the same thing here and start adding these lines. And I'll come in and start adding more crack lines so that these little cracks spread out and, and kind of create that uh, impression that um, Frida Kahlo gave and that sort of thing. If you want to include little trees like uh, Dr. Seuss made, uh, um, whatever you want to include in yours is absolutely up to you. And I like to kind of find the sun a little bit. All right. Uh, Dolly inspired landscape. I'm going to continue to work on mine. You guys work on yours. Hope you have fun with it.